Welcome to another episode of Struggle Stand and we are still following Olympics boxing controversy because today the second female boxer in question Lin Yu Ting she also won her first bout. The reason we have to talk about this fight as well because now we have some response from IOC there is some response from IBA as well and we will actually look into it that what exactly relation between these two associations how they used to work together why they don't really work anymore together and why IOC doesn't recognize the IBA anymore let's look into the both boxers record so if I go through Iman Khalif first if you look at her record so she has 37 fights and 5 KOs and she also lost 9 times and now quickly if I go to Lin Yu Ting she had 41 fights and 1 KO and 14 losses as well so now if you look at their KO ratios it's not really high so the way the news are spreading for the last couple of days that these are two male fighters fighting in female categories or transgenders fighting in a fem uh, female categories their KO ratio is uh, like one and what five out of 37 that doesn't go along well isn't it so they are not really known for power punches but yes uh, iman in last her fight she stopped the italian fighter that is their record and their punching power can be assessed from here now look at iba you must know that iba is international boxing association so just to be clear so before being stripped of its recognition by International Olympics Committee IOC, the International Boxing Association IBA was the governing body of the sport of boxing worldwide. So then, so what exactly happened? However, the IBA was stripped of its status as a global governing body for boxing by the IOC in June last year in 2023 because it failed to complete reforms on governance, finance and ethical issues. So IOC actually stri stripped off for IBA because of the corruptions of finance, whatever there are some, uh, there must be some issues. For this before 2023, they are used to oversee all the fights and regulations and everything, yeah. So you can see, say now, okay, there is, a, there is actually politics in between IBA and IOC so the both will try to put other party down yes so just keep that in mind so let's have a look at what IOC the International Olympics Committee think about this issue the PBU as with previous Olympic boxing competitions the gender and age of the athletes are based on their passport these rules are also applied during the qualification period including the boxing tournaments of the 2023 European Games the Asian Games so what he's actually is saying that to qualify as a male or female competitor, so they don't do any particular medical tests. So they so they rely on the passports and birth certificates from the the country. So they don't do any medical uh, test for the competitors. So which is which is strange because i thought that that would be the case that if any athlete is in question they would do that but they don't so now to the next one 23 we've seen in reports misleading information about two female athletes competing in the olympic games paris 2024 the two athletes have been competing in international boxing competitions for many years in the women's category including at the olympic games tokyo 2020 international boxing association association world championships and iba sanctioned tournaments these two athletes were the victims of a sudden and arbitrary decision by the iba towards the end of the iba world championships in 2023 they were suddenly disqualified without any due process yeah what are you saying that both boxers been competing in iba uh, organized competition for a very long time and uh, last year in the middle of competition while uh, Khalif was about to fight for his gold medal and the other lady Lin was uh, about to fight for medal and they did this uh, test and then they disqualified them so what he's saying that process was not followed to disqualify them according to the IBA minutes available on their website this decision was taken initially solely by the IBA secretary general and CEO 
the IBOA board only ratified it afterwards and only subsequently. Yeah, so it's also that the decision was made by only one person rather than a board. It was done without a due process, so it was a decision of one person only. It's contrary to good governance. Eligibility rules should not be changed during an ongoing competition and any rules change must follow appropriate processes and should be based on scientific evidence. The IOC is committed to protecting the... Okay, so this is the important one. Yeah, so what he's saying that that why IBA did not do those tests before, if they did any tests, why it was not done before the competition, why they did the test during the competition. Of course, he's trying to save himself as well by putting the blame back on IBA that they did not really deal with the situation properly. So first, these ladies been fighting for IBA for a very long time. Then 2023, halfway through the competition, all the competition was almost done like when they were fighting for their medals then they did some sort of test and then they disqualified them here you can see that of course iba at the moment is blaming ioc and ioc actually is blaming uh, iba but they do not have any good process where scrutinize the boxes in questions or athletes and questions so now they're blaming each other from this press talk from IOC you can really tell that they are not thinking to ban these two boxes because they made the decision and of course they won't don't want to take it back they do not have any process in place as well like to medically determine that if uh, an, an athlete is a man or woman so one thing is clear from all this controversy that these two boxes are basically female boxes with a high level of testosterone and there could be some other medical issues with them as well so nobody actually know because their medical record is of course confidential nobody knows about it so these are all rumors that xy chromosomes whatever so nobody has seen those reports because iba did not release those reports so this controversy shows that definitely there is a need for process where the boxers or any other athlete basically go through the medical test and is determined whether they are allowed to compete in a particular competition and that's it from me today and i will see you probably after ufc fight night